one of its key magazines. And because it has a national presence, information that are vital and critical to the success of most of these military men and crime fighters are made available in the National Crime Watch. This magazine has a super mileage. Please put your hands together for National Crime Watch. Having said so, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, every guest invited here this evening is important to us. And on this note, let me recognize the Chief Executive Officer and the publisher of the Pan-Africa International Magazine. This is the man who's been in places and have seen faces. And some of the finest events have been hosted right here in Sheraton. And one of the climbers was the one that brought and represented an award to the South African president, Jacob Zuma. It was indeed a very electrifying moment where the High Commissioner to South Africa was there to receive that award on behalf of the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Republic of South Africa and with a distinguished promise. And what is this promise? To host Nigerian 2018 Pan-Africa International Awards. Please, ladies and gentlemen, let's recognize that mover and shaker in our midst tonight. Prince D. Aya, please your hands together for me. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. Morning, ladies and our distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I can see all the publishers, the publishers of City Pride, Crime Busters, and City Pride Daily. Joshua Oloko, please your hands together for him. <laughs> Joshua Oloko. Okay, thank you so very much, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On the right to hold, I want to say to you the reason why we're here today is because there is business. Crime is in the country, and that is why we're here today. If there were no crime in this country, I don't think we'll be sitting here today. I'll ask a question, I'll need an answer later. There is a particular country in the world where you move everywhere you want to. You don't see a policeman standing. If you know that particular country, probably you'll get one of the designers magazines that will launch tonight. I repeat, there's a particular country in the world where you move and you don't see a policeman. Why? Because law and order is to be 100%. Which country is that? If I touch your mind, Dizzy, why is he here? I'd like to call on, yeah, excuse me, Danny, he'll tell you with some joke. Now, can I just stand right? We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, please don't put the hands together for Maguna. If you have said there is a town in this world without a policeman, I would have said it's my village. A policeman from my village. That are very, very sure. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Maguna, I mean, he's not a lot of fun. Sort of introduction and everything we need to know about this. I said it earlier. I said for something like Mr. Maduna, that it's difficult for you to hear it because of the way he speaks. Ladies and gentlemen, what is the problem with people that even with, to be original is difficult for us? I don't. I, I mean, he's a man. It's not a problem. He can speak in wonderful. It's wonderful accent. I don't have. A, my problem is a very good friend of mine. Travel. I mean, say that. See, so anything we say, all of us will say, Dan, man, you don't say that. See, one day I come the car and you go for a shoot road. Now you see one boutique, see shirt. Very fact, he said, Dami, get that shirt for me. Now I go meet Ibo, guy with the shirt. She said, now how much would you say? She said, 5,000. I said, now last, how much he? How much he said, 2,000. I said, yeah, then, man, pay. The moment I said, then, man, pay. You know what my friend is? He just put his hand in his pocket like this. The next thing I hear, oh, look, I let it down. You want the jeep on similar? Now, me go tell him, I said, damn, man. You don't say that? See. I tell you the truth. People are not original. People are not original. I, I decided recently to, to show love to somebody. I tell him to show love to somebody, and I don't say, okay, there's a new girl I just met. So let me just show love to this girl. I mean, 
it's love season. Let's be happy together. And I started to take her to somewhere very close. Here, in fact, we are in the place right now. I brought her to Sheraton Hotels Restaurant. I think somebody will put your, you put your hands together for me. No, I tried. It's not easy to bring somebody to a restaurant. What you are eating tonight is no joke. I'm telling you the truth. Brought the girl here, and I said, okay, sit, sit down. She sat down. I said, order for anything. Please, I want to tell you, men in the house, that is one thing you should not tell your woman. Take anything you care for. I had the girl call the waiter. I said, waiter, sure. Waiter, call. I said, what do you want? He said, give me coke. I said, ah, in this place, coke. I said, take something big, coke. He said, okay, give me a robot. Ah, I said, this girl will embarrass me and I carry her across. <laughs> I carry her across. I carry her across the road to GRA. You know, GRA is a place in Lagos that is exclusive to the rich, like us. Hello? Exclusive to the rich, like us. And then we got to Jerry, got to one KFC there. They all said, ah, we we'll buy food. Two girls ahead of us. Two girls. Two, two girls ahead of us. The first one got there. He said, hello, do you have jello fries? The waiter said, yes. She said, microwave it. He said, hello, do you have beef? The waiter said, yes. She said, microwave it. That girl left. The second girl came. He said, do you have fried rice? The waiter said, yes. She said, microwave it. He said, do you have fish? The waiter said, yes. She said, microwave it. The girl went to carry go. Just in this hair, yeah, everything. Microwave it. Microwave it. When it was our turn, he just got there. He said, hello. I mean, dog, do you have a uh, white rice? The waiter said, yes. She said, microwave it. He said, do you have turkey? The waiter said, yes. She said, microwave it. He said, do you have popcorn? The waiter said, yes. She said, microwave it. He said, do you have ice cream? The waiter said, yes. She said, microwave it. He said, do you have cold bottle of mineral? The waiter said, yes. He said, my God, that time, I felt like the ground should not open and swallow me. Hello? And then the next thing, the girl, she now asked, she said, how much is it? He said, 3,000. The girl just called me, said, Dami! In fact, when she said, Dami, I was afraid. I thought she was going to say she might go with me. She said, pay. I brought her 4,000 naira. I gave her, the bill was 3,000 naira. I brought her 4, I gave her, and then she gave the waiter. Immediately, I brought, she gave the waiter, and I said, no, just the good. I don't think, no, just the good. The waiter said, auntie, auntie, you get 500 dollars change, she said, microwave it. Everything, microwave it. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for yourself. Promise to be a fantastic night tonight. My name is Exclusive Dami, and we still have a lot more to do here tonight. We're just waiting for one of our dignity that is very, very important around here tonight. I'll be doing one or two things that we, uh, is on our agenda. That's why we delay a bit. But I also like to say here, not because black, that is what? Uniform. I mean, a uniform is simply any attire you wear that is the same thing and, and differentiates you among everybody. Police wear black, 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 black. In fact, act. I'm not talking so now you talk about. <laughs> In fact, Navy wear white, 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 white. I mean, Air Force. Blue, 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 sometimes black. I bet me person tell me, that's the way we last night they wear in a uniform. <laughs> you see, red, yellow, red, 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 black. But that is what they call Gangnam style. Color blocking. And sometimes when I see them around on the street, I'm always very, very, I'm always very, very happy to see the cell people around. Because I must tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if you will agree with me, I don't know if you will, but traffic has reduced tremendously in, uh, in Lagos State. And Kotsi last map. Please let me put your hands together for them. Kotsi last map. Bros, Najoko. Najoko. No, you say you see the drive, you go for Maryland, I'll stop you. You know, a friend of mine just came back from abroad, and he came act actually from Maryland in the United States. And then the moment he got back, he told me, he said, Dami, I had something fantastic when I was in the United States of America. I said, okay, no problem. I said, what was that? He said, actually, anywhere I go to, the moment I get to your road and I'm on the zebra crossing, all cars stop. I said, yeah. That's interesting. He said, once I step on the zebra crossing, all cars will stop, bike will stop, all cars will stop. I said, I said, everything, if I have a place that sometimes they stop, they are called rich Nigeria. Yo, 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I go by the name Delefizi. I'm here to give you a little peace of mind. I to God day. I want to use this video to say, in any situation we are going through in life, we should know there is God. And in anything we are doing in life, we should put God first. Mr. DJ, roll it. <laughs> send a very high power delegation to represent him here tonight. And so in no particular manner, let me recognize the unique barrister, Zogwe Suporuchuku. I hope I got the name correctly. Please, your hands together for him. Thank you so very much. Your hands together for him, please. That is Festus Kiamas Chamber. Is that a clap again? Put your hands together for him. Thank you. And now, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, before the publisher, the editor-in-chief, and the CEO of the National Crime Watch comes out to deliver his address, it is my delight to recognize this fantastic family that have given him the rest of mind, the capacity to do what he's doing, and the zeal to continue with it. No particular man, let me start with the better half. The sweet, charming, and captivating, beautiful first lady. The adorable Mrs. Tessie Okwe. Please, your hands together for her. Ever smiling, ever gorgeous. That was too fast. Could you, can you please? Please put your hands together for her once again. And she's not here alone. She's got her sister and the husband alone. The year together and the beautiful kids. Can you please just wave your hands in there? All right, kids. Thank you so very much. What daddy can do, the kids will learn and perfect. Please put your hands together once again for that wonderful family. <laughs> May I say at this point in time, please, if you're representing any organization, if you're representing any personality, a VIP guest, or any of the awardees tonight, and you've not heard your name, please, I would appreciate it. If you even have your card, just pass it to any of the ushers standing next to you. And let them give it to me. I'll recognize you. It will not be in our character to have you seated right here and we don't recognize you. No. The Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. Please put your hands together for NTA. The more you clap, the more you see your face on national television. So please put your hands together for NTA, please. Thank you. I will also have in our maze, in a global television, 
there have been a places that have seen crisis, at least on this stage right here on Charlton, more than 10 of my events right here, they've covered it, and believe me honestly, it's amazing when you hear people call you all over the world to tell you you're doing a fantastic job. And this is because in a TV, a global TV, is taking events in Nigeria, in Lagos, in Charlton, the center of excellence across the globe. Once again, Inet TV. Please put your hands together for Inet TV. Thank you so very much. Put your hands together for Inet TV. <laughs> to deliver a speech of immense proportion, a speech coming after 14 to 15 years into research, into investigative journalism, is no child's play. And as I speak to you, believe me honestly, Tonight, you're about to listen to one of the finest address coming from a gentleman with a vision and a passion to see that crime is reduced to its barest minimum. And that is why companies like MTM, First Bank, and other corporate organizations are playing their social responsibility in this wise. The civil defense, the military authority, we want to keep this country safe, not only for ourselves, but for our children and children yet unborn. And if we can say and beat our chairs and say to ourselves, I will leave this generation, that the next generation of Nigerians will do better than we have done, that means we have succeeded. But if we leave and we're told in our graves that the Nigerian that we left is chartered, that means we failed this generation. But because you're taking that position today, because you took that stand with us today, that is why you're here with us tonight. Wonderful people, please put your hands together for yourself. Thank you for being here for us. And it's not just about us. It's about a bigger vision, which is bigger than us. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you and I have been waiting for, it is time, ladies and gentlemen, to invite to the podium a man who conceived this vision more than 14 years ago, who decided to give it his best shot. And tonight, we're celebrating 40 distinguished Nigerians. This is as a result of serious of research. The faculties are sleepless nights, all in the bid to make sure everyone receiving an award tonight knows why he or she is receiving that award. And every corporate organization receiving this award tonight knows why precisely. Ladies and gentlemen, I want us with a standing ovation to welcome the publisher, the editor-in-chief, and the chief executive officer of National Crime Watch, Tony Okwe. Please, your hands together for him as he rises to this occasion. Congratulations, Tony. Yes, you may be seated as you listen to one of the finest address this evening. Your Excellencies, distinguished recipients, invited guests, publisher, editor in chief, CEOs present here. Distinguished gentlemen of the press, captains of industries, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all to this epic making event, the National Crime Watch Award 2017. National Crime Watch Award has held several occasions before now, but this is the first time we are making it, we are making a bold statement in holding this big. Before now, we have done regional awards at regions. We are truly delighted to be doing this, this particularly at this very critical time of our national life. Some people, organizations and institutions have has exceptionally done well in leading the cause for a new crime-free society. Hence, 
this recognition. I consider it a great honor and privilege to host this event. If you may know, Crime was started as a newsletter in 2003 and became and became a newspaper in 2008. And we rebranded into what we now call National Crime Watch magazine in 2014. Today, beyond the awards and recognitions, we are celebrating 14 years of extensive and well-rounded crime reporting in Nigeria. It has come without its numerous challenges over the years. But with the support of all of you here, rather some of you here seated today, we know the stories, you know the stories, and we have come a long way. Over the years, we have created and sustained these great platforms to appreciate, recognize, and compensate hard work, transparency, excellence, and merit in governance, corporate best practice, traditional ordinance, private individuals, organizations, and groups across all strata of the society. We must express our profound gratitude to all for, for being our resolute partners over the years in sustaining this erudite of rewarding dogged achievements. Without your support, perhaps, we could not have done tremendous. Our appreciative regards to those who have believed and supported us over the years. This edition of National Crime Watch Award is an enriched, enlarged, and embedded version of our known tradition of excellence over the years. National Crime Watch Award is one of our cardinal objectives designed to celebrate and honor and recognize excellence in crime prevention and management within the Nigerian borders. It is gradually becoming one of the most prestigious and certified annual award and celebration in Nigeria. It is actually our end of year party for us in the security and crime industry. We are all aware that there are genuine concerns about the high level of crime rate in Nigeria. The nation today is, is replete with all kinds of issues, ranging from corruption, armed robbery, advanced fee fraud, assassination, child and woman trafficking, all manner of insurgencies, rape and above all, terrorism to mention a few. The utilization of our resources and revenues generated by government at all levels and agencies has left so many unanswered questions. Given the high level of economic recklessness and public stealing that has, that has become a national embarrassment from some leaders in position of authority, the resources and revenues generated is meant to provide basic, basic infrastructures like portable drinking waters, electricity, road, healthcare, education, housing, and most importantly, security of lives and property. Although we are beginning to see some level of decorum because of the influence of the man at the helm of affairs today, President Buhari. National Crime Watch Recognition Award, for example, in leadership was inaugurated in 2010 to honor and recognize excellence with a view to encourage sound stewardship and character, character in the fight against crime. A crime free society is a society built on sound product of intellectualism. It makes a nation to excel, it galvanizes the moral standard and enthrones leadership trust, strife, confidence of the public or the authority. Good governance, efficient policing, human capacity building, among others, form the bedrock for the 2017 edition of the National Crime Watch Award. Our lead award for this year edition are the National Crime Watchman of the Year, won by DCP Ibrahim Magu, Deputy Police Commissioner, the Acting Chairman of the EFCC. And I'm able governor, the Governor of the Year, Crime Prevention, won by His Excellency, Mr. Aki Omiyamodi, the Governor of Lagos State. For their impeccable exploit, 
since they assumed office on November 9, 2015, and May 2019, and May 29, 2015, respectively. Our guest speaker, Barrister Fisos Kiyamu, who is heavily represented by Barrister Uzo Igwe Supuruchuku, up on right. We'll be making justice to this year team, the rule of law enforcement officers in national security and the fight against corruption and related crime. Ladies and gentlemen, without further delay, it is my honor and privilege as the editor-in-chief CEO of National Crime Watch Magazine to officially declare this event open. I thank you all. Excellent evening, and this is one of the finest speeches I've listened to us from a CEO and a publisher of the National Crime Watch magazine. Once again, your hands together for him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, National Crime Watch Award 2017. 40 distinguished Nigerians making a difference in their profession will be honored indeed in this very special way. My co compare said something initially, and I think I'm in, in Nigeria as a Nigerian, and one of so much with a passion, and will do anything to defend this country with no less important than Barrister Festus Kiyamo said. He has this overwhelming passion to fight crime in all its ramifications. And because it is expedient for him that this event cannot be complete without his presence here today, he decided to send someone to represent him. And because something crept up so powerfully, and that made him to be absolutely engaged. But believe me honestly, in the next couple of minutes, be listening to the keynote address from a man who had the capacity to deliver justice as far as crime watch is concerned and as far as Nigeria is concerned. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, let's put our hands together for the guest speaker this evening. My delight as I invite Barrister Festus Kiyamo, who is being represented today by one of these powerful legal numerary as well. Please, ladies and gentlemen, let's put hands together for him as he rises up to this occasion to deliver the theme of today's event. Ladies and gentlemen, please your hands together for him once again. Congratulations, sir. Once again, the guest speaker representing oh, no, Festus Kiyamo Chambers today, in short, representing Festus Kiyamo today. He is in charge of legal and corporate property consultants. Ladies and gentlemen, a legal practitioner of corporate and property consultants. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Uzogwe Supo Rochugu. Please, your hands together for him once again. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is uh, Uzogwe Supo Rochugu. Legal practitioner with Festus Kiyamo Chambers Legal Office. Um, please permit me to humbly hide under the existing protocol yeah. while I deliver my message. I am directed to deliver this keynote address on the role of law enforcement officers in national security and the fight against corruption and related crimes. Well, law enforcement agency is an agency which enforces law. This may be a special local or federal agency, and like DSS, NDLEN, some of them include the Nigerian Police Force, the National Security and Civil Defense Corps, the Economic and Financial Crime Commission, 
the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, the DSS, the Nigerian Customs Service, the Nigerian Immigration. All of these are the law enforcement agencies that we have in this country. But I will be dwelling mainly on the Nigerian police and the Economic and Financial Crime Commission, which is one and the same thing. I want to start from Section 4 of the Nigerian Police Act, CAP, P19-2004, Laws of the Foundation of Nigeria, which provides the general duties of the police force. It says that the police shall be employed for the prevention and detection of crime, the, the apprehension of offenders, the preservation of law and order, the protection of life and property, and the due enforcement of all laws and regulations with which they are directly charged and shall perform such military duties within and outside Nigeria as may be required of them by or under the authority of this or any other act. As we all know, the subject of police and national security in Nigeria often conjures fears and aggressions, weeping and overbroad sweeps of political dissidents. In the present republic, the Nigerian police has mobilized in support of wide effort and combat national security stress. The time, this included the jihadist terrorism, the Boko Haram, the militants in the Niger Delta, and so many terrorism all over the country, including the border of Nigeria and Cameroon, the border is coming from that side. Some observers see this as the necessary precaution why others already see parallel and recent history of law enforcement abuses. Since, since the year 1998, more than 50,000 Nigerians have been killed by this insurgency. The Nigerian police as a law enforcement agency must be available to conduct investigations into political activities, insurgency, intelligence, and security-related issues. This will curtail widespread right abuses, political harassment, killings of innocent citizens, and destruction of properties, regulation of coercive government and police powers willing to protect the state, including against external military threats as well as internal threats to undermine governance. What makes the issue of Nigerian police and national security so complex is the secular nature of, nature of the Nigerian community. And this, and this gives rise to two major challenges for policing national security and the fight against corruption, one of which is the decentralization and localization of the of nature of Nigerian police, which creates a normal organization problem in coordinating national security activities. While the second is the fact that judicial officers of the course of record in Nigeria are appointed by the executive arm of government. And it is a common knowledge, as you and I know, that he who pays the viper dictates the tone. Investigation of corruption. An important and effective tool in detecting and investigating corruption is the analysis of information and documents of business entities which involved in corruption and related to defenders. It is especially useful cases when corruption has already been committed and in cases when corruption has already been committed in cases involving allegations of systematic corruption. Analysis of accounting and payment documents, conditions and contracts, and other corporate documents can provide useful evidence. This may require more effort and time, for example, wiretapping, wiretapping a telephone conversation. In Nigeria, specialized knowledge is also not always available in law enforcement bodies to analyze these documents. However, it is worth investing in this, as it helps to acquire very valuable evidence, just like what is available in the Western world. Abuse of rights during investigation. Effective investigation should respect persons' rights and freedoms. Section 34, sub 1, A to C of the 1999 Constitution, as amended, clearly prohibits torture, inhuman and degrading treatment, slavery and servitude, forced and compulsory labor, while Section 36, 
sub five provider. Every person who is charged with a criminal offense shall be presumed to be innocent until he is proven guilty. Then, on the issue of prosecution of corruption cases, prosecutors should play a leading role in investigating corruption. Because this, this is important because his involvement from the beginning in the, both the trial investigation and investigation proper will help to ensure that so many cases are referred to court. Because where there is no proper investigation, you see that some cases are not, at the end of the day, they, 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 the DPP or whoever that is involved will, make, will, 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 will submit that there's no case for the accused person or the defendant to, to answer. But if the prosecutor is involved from the beginning, he will have an in-depth knowledge of what the crime that has been committed, that is alleged to have been committed, entails. And in doing so, he will be able to have enough evidence to submit to the defense counsel so as to be able to prefer charges against such defendants. Now, we have a particular matter that my office was involved in the UK, and uh, a, a young lady was married and they had some, uh, some about five children with her client. But along the line, his husband discovered that something happened, that she has been having a extramarital affair. And when she tried to make peace with her client, her client said no. What she did was to write a petition against her client. You know, the United Kingdom will never want to hear anything about uh, that you are a terrorist or that and, uh, and all of that. She alleged that my, our client is a terrorist, um, uh, photoshopped so many pictures showing him where he was, where he is training, uh, Al-Qaeda and so many things. You will see the man face. But at the end of the day, during trial, investigation in the UK, they were able to show on the television screen, they dissected the hand where he was holding the gun with this hand. They were able to show that from here to this side is our client's body, but from this hand to here, the whole of the hand is, was brought from somewhere to fix, to show that he was an Aka Aka a member of Akaeda. And then, they went for that. They even came to our office here in Lagos to interview some of our lawyers. They went straight to Igbo State, where the, both of them, the, the, the couple came from, to interview the parents. On one occasion, when she was making calls to the father, she asked the father to speak in Igbo so that the UK police would not hear or maybe wiretap her telephone conversation. But unknown to her, during trial, it was also shown on the screen everything that they discussed spoken in Igbo, transcribed in English, and based on that, the prosecuting counsel was able to, the defense counsel was able to ask her questions. That was where she dropped every charges against her client. What I am trying to bring up this is that the in-depthness of uh, uh, the, the, the investigation in the Western world, we are very much far behind because if not for all of these gadgets, our clients would have gone in for it, and if not for life imprisonment, he, had, he would not even travel to UK again, but he's still in the UK. He comes and goes. Moving further, I also say that it is important. Okay. Yes. Indirect evidence and circumstantial evidence may prove useful to prove corruption that often goes beyond a simple bribe. As example shows that Link, a, example shows it's a, 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 a transaction linking a decision taken by a public officer in favor of a company and a, an action done later by the company in favor of the same public officer. You know, uh, corruption cases sometimes uh, it is uh, there is no uh, there is, it is a kind of appreciate the fight against corruption. There is need to remind ourselves that what the corruption entails, particularly it is the stealing of the common world by those entrusted to keep it for us. Since all existing legislation and methods of fighting the menace has, have failed, what new methods do we improve to fight corruption? The authors of the new International Webster Comprehensive Dictionary of the English Language in Cyclopedia Edition 7, Column 2, define corruption in these words. Corruption challenges the very legitimacy of the state. The scourge of corruption within the police force 
and law enforcement itself constitutes a serious threat to efforts to combat organized crimes and illicit drug trafficking. Without any special study, more than 75% of Nigerians feel that some or most of the, our police officers are corrupt. Corruption has, very, has been variously defined by our superior courts through the case laws. laws. In the case of Akin Bola, the very popular case, where the chairman of EFCC reported in 2012, nine Nigerian weekly law reports per 1306 pages, 509 to 510, paragraph F to C. The Court of Appeal, per Salawa, JCAH, in then was, and operated on the menace of corruption in Nigeria at all. I quote, I think it would be apt for me to observe at this point in time that corruption is the hydra headed monster that has several decades bedeviled the corporate existence of this beloved country, Nigeria, in particular, and the entire African country in general, continent in general. The pandemic of corruption has undoubtedly shaped and defeated us as the root of all evils known to man. The pandemic of corruption has eventually has virtually brought the country to its knees. Indeed, it's a, it is truism that corruption is antithetic to the well-cherished democratic ideas and rules of law. Whenever any of these, uh, our agencies, the first of these are agencies, the Inspector General of, um, the Inspector General of Police and the rest of them, whenever they, are, they come into office newly, they will always reiterate their commitment to fight tirelessly against corruption in their institutions and agencies. However, we must all admit that the fight against this widespread scourge, that is insecurity and corruption, can only be effectively conducted by staff that are honest, dedicated, professional, and well-equipped in terms of modern technology of combating corruption and insecurity. Again, each of the heads of these agencies act in position of quasi judicial arbiter, as they from time to time sit as unbiased arbiter over issues and disputes that corrupt brought up under their agencies. So whenever a judge, or whenever I mention a judge in this discourse, it is inclusive of a, of a quasi judicial arbiter like the heads of the aforementioned agencies. In the, again, in the case of First Fuel Limited against NNPC, reported in 2007, to Nigerian Weekly Law Report, page 284, the Honorable Court has this to say with respect to the tradition, traditional role of a judge as one of the agents of law enforcement. The traditional role of a judge is to ensure that disputes are resolved in accordance with the law and rules of procedure more than often. The judge has an impeded discretion in the discharge of his role. Again, in the case of Kanifa Wemi against Akilu, reported in 1994, 6th Nigeria Law Report, page part 351, page 387, at 473, the Court of Appeal, part, part Ashalon in JCA, as it then was, had operated on what the role of law enforcement ought to be. Thus, the role of law in a free society is that which affords the common and citizen opportunity to seek redress, wrong to seek the redress of a wrong, to declare his right, to stand before the court of justice and ask for justice to be done. That is, justice that is without blemish, based on reason and good conscience. It will be recalled that corruption and insecurity are major factors of instability and serious threat to the national peace. After almost 20 years of a modern democracy in Nigeria, we still express concern about impunity in the face of corruption and insecurity. Too often, we still see a lack of investigation and prosecution of individuals involved in acts of corruption and heinous crimes, such as the one perpetrated by the Fulani headsmen, Boko Haram militants, EPC, or acts of corruption perpetrated by members of the ruling party who can neither be investigated nor prosecuted by the Attorney General of the Federation or of the state, who are regarded as unfortunate. We all know what is happening now. Uh, we, everybody is accusing everybody. Somebody, a friend of mine, a lawyer in the Economic and Financial Crime Commission, I met him in the Federal High Court and was asking about a particular minister of this, serving minister of this nation. And what he told me is that it is only God that 
can prosecute that particular minister. I will not mention them anyway. But some of us know who I'm talking about. You see, it is only God that can come down and prosecute that particular minister. But we, we so many people have fingers have that been pointed at him of one corruption or the other, and he's still serving. Yet, and they, they say the ruling party says the only person that can prosecute him is God Almighty. Still, with the case laws, the fight against corruption will be always be a portal effort in the generation to come, unless and until independence of the judiciary is fully guaranteed in our constitution. This is because section 231, sub 1 and 2, 238, sub 1 and 2, 250, sub 1 and 2, 271, sub 1 and 2 of the 1990 constitution, as amended, clearly provides for the appointment of the Chief Justice of Nigeria and the Justices of the Supreme Court by the President only on the recommendation of the National Judicial Council. The same thing goes for the President of the, Federal, the, the Chief Judge of the Federal High Court. The same thing goes for the President of the Court of Appeal and the Justice of the Court of Appeal appointed by the President only on the recommendation of the National Judicial Council. Now, if you know that he who pays the pipe has to pay the bill, the, 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 the most of the judicial officers will always favor the appointers or their employer. That is the truth, whether we like it or not. It cannot be, we cannot see what used to, what happened in the United States, the Watergate scandal, and the, uh, when uh, the guilty was accused of uh, having a extramarital affair with uh, a lady during his uh, time in office and all of that. So many, if you read the news, you see that so many presidents, even while they are in the office, they are being prosecuted and all of that. But we cannot see that in Nigeria because the, 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 the judicial officers are appointed by the president until we have the yeah, independent, appointed only by the National Judicial Council. So that, they, they, of course, they are not in the executive arm of government, so they are, they are not doing anything, um, committing any, any uh, crime or corruption for the judicial officers to protect them. But you see that as, as long as I am you, I am the executive, the president or the governor of the state, I appoint you as the chief judge and the other judges of the high court of the state, you see that there are so many, so many of the matters that come before you. Like some of the matters that we did against last month, we don't go to the most of them. We don't go to the state high court in Lagos here. We go to the federal high court. The same thing goes with if you have a fundamental right action here. We don't go the, the federal high court and the state high court both have the concurrent jurisdiction. But we don't go to the state high court because we don't. Especially, I want to crave the indulgence. Oshis, please, where are you? All the Oshis, can you please quickly come to me? As you crave your indulgence, DJ Lighter Music, all the ushers, can you please come to me? All Nigeria PRC, a packaging specialist, Mr. Inachi Azu Ukama. Please, your hands together for him, please. Thank you so very much, sir, for coming. Thank you. It's a pleasure having you tonight. And so, ladies and gentlemen, before the first test of awards tonight, we are going to unveil the new face of the National Crime Magazine. And the moment indeed has come, as we, at this point in time, in no particular manner, call out some of our recipients to join in this wonderful assignment. Ladies and gentlemen, can you take a bold step forward towards the table? A bold step towards the table? Excellent. So, Designerly, yeah, from the auditor, that is it. It's in the blood. It falls in the blood. So we will take it gradually. We will say nice. <laughs> Amazing. All right, from the auditor, you're doing your job excellently. Thank you so very much. All right, now can you face the audience with it? Let's see the front page of this international edition. Now we smile on your face as the cameras roll right now. Cameras rolling, action. I can see MTN, the smiles, the loudest. Thank you. Please put your hands together once again for this. Just arriving at the peak of time, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, DJ, thank you very much. He's one of my jurors leading female activists. She's been replaced with recent faces. She's tall around the globe, doing justice and delivering what is capability. Ladies and gentlemen, she's street credible. 
She had the capacity to do justice. Let's bring us together for the powerful Dr. Joe of Play on the Market, one of the hours being tonight. Please bring us together for her. This is one doctor that never speaks. This is one doctor that has the capacity to speak on and on. Please. The ESC chairman, five copies, please, ushers, can you please take five copies? Take it to the ESC chairman. Dr. Odumaki is designingly creative, energetic lady, as Donald Trump will always say, energy, energy. She has enough energy to move and move and to make things happen. Once again, please, your hands together for Dr. Joe Odumaki, please. Thank you. Put your hands together for a while. Um, the magazine will be going round. My ushers, please make sure you have copies as people make their choices before we go to the first set of award presentation tonight. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I've just been told that Guinness Nigeria PRC is in the house. Please just put your hands together for the representative of Guinness Nigeria PLC. <laughs> Mr. Adebayo Olufemi, please your hands together for him. Can you wave your hands for the hand? Look, aha, over there. Ushers, can you please reach out and let's bring Mr. Adebayo Olufemi forward, please? Let him come forward. That is him with the designer's glass behind. No, please, Guinness is an award recipient tonight, so you can be behind. You get the point? That's just the gem. So you can be behind, please. Go get Mr. Olufemi forward. Create a space for him in front. To my very right hand side. Guinness is an award recipient. So you can sit behind and get the award. Please. Excellent evening. Thank you, DJ. Thank you. Thank you. She, she looks so beautiful tonight. Tonight, Ma, this is your golden moment. This young man standing next to you in a white designer suit has to hold night and day to bring this event to reality. You and I know the economic situation, the recession and everything. I know you're good to go and you understand what it takes for you. We can see the acting EFCC chairman, man of the year 2017. As we speak, Nigeria is bleeding under the heavy weight of corruption. We must agonize less and organize the more. We have been bled white. But impunity can no longer try. We've seen a lot of things that the EFCC chairman has brought to bear. I heard the movement against corruption. I want to encourage each and everyone. Corruption is not only stealing, it includes lying pure sabotage. I just want to plead that from homes, churches, mosques, events like this, anywhere, marketplace, bus stop, we must always preach the change and add the change. There can never be development or growth without fighting corruption. So I'm sure that by the time we live here today, will all be inspired. But I've said it that more than ever, I will do all that I can with even all the organizations that I have, anywhere I find myself, I must continue to preach. And I also trust that government will create an enabling environment. All our workers, our pensioners, everyone must become an apostle, must become a preacher, must always preach the change and add the change. Well, I've seen the very colorful magazines. I've seen a lot of our functionaries, administrators. I've seen the governor of Lagos State. And I'm sure that by the time we read this magazine that has been ironically written, that is going to be beneficial to us. I want to say that on behalf of all the organizations that I have belong, as the president of Women and Rights, Nigerians Unite Against Corruption, Nigerians Unite Against Terror, Movement Against Corruption, Save Nigerian Food.
Yes. Uh, yes, I'm going to get 10 copies. And I'm also seeing uh, one of our frontline One of our front line is a uh, broadcaster, Sadiq Daba. And I'm sure that uh, we all know uh, what's happening to him. And another copy. Copy for my friend, this General Basia of Citadel of Mercy. So making 10 copies. And uh, so I, I, I really appreciate uh, this rare opportunity more for the EFCC, although Mr. Sami is here, but I will be seeing Mr. Magu on Monday because I will be in Abuja, the EFCC chairman, so I will take one with me. I will take one to the Rose Safety. I'm a special, I'm honorary special marshal to the Rose Safety. So that will be a cover price. If you want to get your jam, I'm the ambassador. One for jam. Rose Safety. Okay. So that's cover price for all that I've mentioned. Thank you. Amazing doctor. Fantastic doctor. Ashes, can you please come over? Take this ten copies. I saw the auditor welcomes her again and appreciate her for what she has done. Ashes, can you come to daddy? Ashes, come to daddy. Sorry. Juliet, can you come to me quickly? Juliet, come to me quickly. Please take this to Dr. Joe in the market, please. Dr. Coppins. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. This is Arifa Su Crime Watch, National Crime Watch Award. C17 Crime Watch Award 2017. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. This is going down for race as the first crime security company. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, for the first award tonight, let's put our hands together for Techno Crime Security Limited. Your hands together for Techno Crime Security Limited. <laughs> Techno Crime Security Limited. Oh my God. Sweet and adorable. Please, your hands together for her as she comes out. Turn around and face the crowd with enough smiles on your face. We are going to take the citation for this award and to stand by to present this award in no particular manner, ladies and gentlemen. The wonderful sales representative of MTN Nigeria will be standing by to do the presentation of this award. So, sir, please your hands together for him as he comes out, standing by with the ushers where the awards are. So, stand with the ushers. Sir. Thank you very much, MTN. Stand by there. Stand by there. Just like Nigeria PLC. Please, your hands together for Union Bank. It's getting close. Now it's just who wants it most. It's just like that's how it is. Because we have our available. So quickly, let's look to the next award as MTN stand by for this presentation. And now for the next award, ladies and gentlemen. And when I fall down. For the next award, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, MP 
MPF Microfinance Bank. Please your hands together for MPF Microfinance Bank. Number one and nothing less Lead me to my destiny I have waited patiently I have vision, though I believe I know I can count on me So stand up This award is presented to the MPF Microfinance Bank and the category is the Microfinance Bank of the Year 2017 in recognition of your banking operations and granting loan facilities to law enforcement officers to ease their financial needs. A round of applause, please. All right, thank you so very much. Congratulations. Quickly, your response. Sorry, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, permit me to, on behalf of the MD, having uh, a little crack in his voice. Uh, on behalf of the management, board, and staff of MDF Microfinance Bank, I want to say a big thank you for this award. I want to assure you that that thing we know how to do, we will continue to do best. Thank you very much, National Academy. For the next set of awards, ladies and gentlemen, present the next set of awards, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Let's invite Mr. Osito Sunday to stand by for the next set of presentation of awards. Mr. Sunday, sir, can you please stand by for the next set of awards? And. Um, the NSDC boss, can you please also stand by? Meet with the awardees, with the, sorry, with the ushers, so that you get the awards. MCC, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a representative of EFCC. This is the agency award, not the personal award. EFCC won two awards. So this is for the agency now. Oh, Excellent. Thank you. This award is presented to EFCC. And the category is in the Law Enforcement Agency of the year 2016 and 2017. In recognition of your immense contribution to the fight against financial crime in Nigeria, 2016 and 2017. Excellent and congratulations. The, the only hope of Nigeria presently now is the uh, Economic and the Financial Crimes Commission. Hmm. That, is, that is the truth. When the uh, chairman of the commission visited the Guardian, said a lot of things that were off camera and President. it became very, very clear to us that the media has to join in this fight against this monster called corruption. Corruption is depriving your children, your parents, your mother of good life. So we have to fight it. So here is some all the accolades and the chairman of the ESCC deserve all the necessary media support. Even if they say he's doing, uh, fighting a media war, what do they call it? They say media judgment or media... That is what the, those money bags that stole our money call it. You understand? It, we have to do media trial. That's to start from there. Before the court, we do their trial. Thank you. That is the stand of all kind of reporters in Nigeria. Excellent congratulations, EFCC, as an agency. Thank you very much. Uh, let me, on behalf of the acting chairman, Ibrahim Mustafa Babu, commend 
the National Crime Watch for this uh, innovative uh, partnership. I want to say in the words of Ibrahim Mabu himself that we do not have, in the EFCC, we do not have the monopoly of knowledge to fight economic and financial crimes or corruption. We rely on citizens and the media, particularly, to carry through this trying period. So on behalf of the EFCC, on behalf of Brian Marco and his team, I want to dedicate this award to the Nigerian people and the media in particular. Thank you. God bless you. Excellent and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. This is for a corporate organization that I've done us proud, nationally and internationally. The last award, MTN Nigeria. Please, your hands together for MTN Nigeria. This award is presented to MTN Nigeria and in the category of telecom company that partners crime prevention and eradication in 2016 and 2017. In recognition of MTN social corporate responsibility projects in donating patrol vehicles and security gadgets to several government security agencies across the country towards crime prevention and eradication in supporting the logistic needs of the security agencies. The Nigerian police have been a strong beneficiary. A round of applause to MTN Nigeria. And now for the award. Uh, I want to present this award, uh, Telecom Company Department Crime Prevention and Eradication in 2016-2017. I'm aware of, uh, of what MTN has been doing. I've attended several uh, initial ceremonies of high levels, uh, um, what's it called, uh, cops to Nigerian police. Uh, I don't, I, I, I think you're, you're really benefiting from Nigeria. You should do more. <laughs> that is that is my own take on it. President, do more. Congratulations on your award. May I? On behalf of um, the MTN family, thank you to National Crime Watch magazine for this fantastic award. Um, MTN is a network, the only network in Nigeria that provides you that service everywhere you go. And we want to assure you that we're going to partner not just with crime reporters, security personnel, agencies across this country to continue to uplift the welfare of security personnel, logistics, and overall provide better security for Nigerians. And I want to assure you that MTN and organization are doing very well, are doing so much, and we're going to do so well provide CSR for Nigerians. We're a company that do not shy away from our responsibilities to Nigerians, and we are doing that excellently well. And I can also assure you that this award will be a reminder to us to do more next time. Thank you very much. Next award goes to Guinness Nigeria PLC. Guinness Nigeria PLC. Please your hands together for Guinness. The award goes to, this award is for the Guinness Nigeria PLC and in the category of most secured safety conscious agency in recognition of your safety conscious policy. Congratulations. Yeah, on behalf of uh, the management of uh, National Crime Watch newspapers, I would like to present this award of most secured and safety conscious industry in 2017. Congratulations.
Bia for the management, the board and the staff of Guinness Nigerian BLC. I want to say thanks to the National Crime Watch for this recognition and the award. Guinness Nigerians propose is to celebrate life every day, everywhere. And if people are not safe and secure, they cannot be celebrating life. And so we want to appreciate Crime Watch for this award. And we can assure you that we will not rest on our hearts. The sky is just the starting point. Thank you. Congratulations, Guinness Nigerian Limited. Thank you, Mr. Sandy Odiche, for that brilliant presentation. And now to present the next set of awards is my delight as I invite the sweet, charming, and captivating Dr. Joe Okeo Dumagi to stand on the podium to present the next set of awards. Please your hands together for Doctor as she comes out to present the next set of awards. These awards are personalities awards. As she walks towards AIG, Christine Olakme retired. Please, let's put the hands together for him. He happens to be. This award is presented to AIG, Christian Olakme, retired. Chris Olakme. Chris Olakme, sorry for that pronunciation. AIG, Christian Olakme. is the Road Traffic Administrator of the Year in recognition of your immense effort in ensuring free flow of traffic in Lagos State. A round of applause to that, please. Excellent. Thank you. On behalf of National Crime Watch Awards 2017, I present this Road Traffic Administrator of the Year Award in recognition of your immense efforts in ensuring free flow of traffic in Lagos. AIG Christian Olapwe, congratulations. On behalf of the CEO, last month, AIG Chris Olako retired. I want to say a big thank you for the recognition award given to him. And we, he's promising to do more. And we are also employing members of the public, especially this period that we have, the Ember period, to be safety conscious. Drive safely and wishing everyone of us a prosperous ceremony. Thank you. So, gentlemen, let's invite Igo Doro. Sorry, Igo Daro, Austin Oserati. Oserati, please. I got that right. Igodaro Austin Osarati. Please your hands together for him. This award is presented to Igodaro Austin Osarati, the president and founder of Unai AD, National Crime Watch Philanthropist of the Year 2017, in recognition of your immense support in providing finance and relief material to internally displaced present and the plight of the needy in the society. A round of applause to that, please. Congratulations. Congratulations, sir. On behalf of National Crime Watch Award 2017, I gladly present this award of the National Crime Watch Philanthropist of the Year 2017, in recognition of your immense support in providing finance, relief materials to internally displaced persons and the plight of the needy in this society. 
this award is presented today to the president and founder of Unagi, Igodaro Austin Sarreti. Congratulations. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I would say I'm highly, highly honored to this award. I want to say a big thank you to Crime Watch, National Crime Watch, for the great job they've done so far, for coming crime in the society, fighting corruption, and social vices in the society. Mr. Obe, Tony, kudos to you for all your efforts so far. And I want to say it is good to be good. Good name is better than riches. Yeah, we are all fighting crime in one accord. Because if you don't empower people, if you say you are fighting crime, you are arresting them, jailing them, tomorrow when they come out, they will do worse. But if you empower them, you cap niche for them, you see that you reduce crime drastically in the society. So that's why I keep in through that means to see how we can curb social vices in the society and empower the youth. Thank you all. Congratulations, sir. Congratulations. Ojita Sunday. Presidu Crime Reporters Association of Nigeria. Ojita Sunday, where are you? Are you on the red carpet? This award is presented to Odita Sunday, President CRAN, for Exemplary Leadership Award in recognition of your incredible, excellent leadership example and achievement as President Crime Reporter Association of Niger Nigeria, CRAN. Congratulations, sir. A round of applause, please. Congratulations, as doctor. Is there a opportunity to present this award is presented to Tajudi Balogun, Commander Lagos State Command, for the best state commanding of the year, in recognition of your immense effort in the fight against pipeline vandalism and related crime in Lagos State. Congratulations, sir. Wow, and a common courage. On behalf of National Crime Watch, I'm so honored, serious, privileged to present this award 2017 to the best state commandant of the year in recognition of your immense effort in the fight against pipeline vandalism, which has become an abattoir, and relative crime in Lagos State. Commander, Lagos State Command, Mr. Tajuddin Bandoku. Congratulations, sir. And next to that, I'm so happy that this wonderful award is coming to me from you. I was telling one of my boys here when I said I need to get up and to go and meet this woman fighter there. He doesn't know. He asked me who is that woman. I said, You might not know, but I know. All the way back to the time of late Bekura and Kuti. They are so rest perfect feet and so many things. And when I came to you, I told you, oh her. I keep on doing what you are doing for humanity. The Lord is your strength. Because way, way back, no matter of now or long, long time ago, you risk your life that you are not sure of could be the outcome of it. But here you are. We are here we are. Thank God for everything. My own son name is Balo. Traditionally, we are doing what we are supposed to be doing. And I'm so happy for doing what I'm doing. Simply me, do much is given, much is expected. And to come home to the National Crime Watch, well, I told your boss yesterday, day before yesterday, 10 years down the lane, 14 years, and you know Joe, you're doing very, very well. So we are all on the same boat, on the same
same platform. Thank God for everything. Thank God again. Thank God again. And thank everybody for being here. God bless everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, the citation. This award goes to Abdullahi Ghana Muhammadu, Commandant General, NSCDC. It's a lifetime achievement award in recognition of your immense effort in the protection of public infrastructures in Nigeria. Excellent. Another courage. On behalf of the National Crime Watch Awards 2017, Lifetime Achievement Award, in recognition of your immense effort in the protection of public infrastructures in Nigeria, Commander General NSCDC Abdullahi Ghana. How much? Okay. Almighty God, but this world is on a different level. Because this award is not mine, it's far, far above me. This award is meant for my Commandant General, who, due to the efficiency of, efficiency of uh, official matters, you couldn't make it here personally. And by extension, I want to say, on behalf of him and on behalf of the entire Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, all over the Federation, who believe in effectiveness and efficiency in everything we do, who believe seriously in being humble and humane, and by extension, in our integrity and credibility, we want to thank you all for seeing that you do want to play well by continuing all of us all over the Federation to make sure that we maintain and sustain our integrity and credibility in all education. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. And I will definitely pass your message down to the team. And I will also let him know you are the one that gave the award. And we thank you now, Grand Word again. Thank you very much. God bless everybody. And his message to you in cash, please let me see somebody that will come and collect. I believe you should come and collect that. Thank you very much. That's our humble support. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so very much. Thank you. And now for the next award, ladies and gentlemen, this indeed is a very special award. And I'm going to ask Dr. Joe DeMarkin to stand tall in the middle of this center of attraction. As we focus our eyes on the slide, as we focus our eyes on the slide, and once the slide over, we will call who to present the award. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call two wonderful personalities. The MP of Microfinance Bank, MD. I'm going to call the Civil Defense, Civil Defense, and finally the Crime. Hmm. These three people, three wise ones. So please, Civil Defense, can you join us, three of you, Sunday Auditor, Civil Defense, to present just one award to one distinguished lady. Your hands together. This award category is for Civil Defender of the Year. In recognition of your immense effort in consistently speaking out and ensuring justice for the rights of Nigerians who are constantly abused. Congratulations, a billion times back. God bless you. Destiny, but I have waited patiently. I have vision. Well, sin is believing. He said it, and we are not afraid to 
or we are to say what we witness, what we have done, which even has gone beyond this national bandit that has gone global and was shown on the screen now. So congratulations. First and foremost, I'm also dedicating the award to four different categories. The first one, all those held by Shekau, the terrorists, our mothers, our fathers, our brothers, our sisters, our Chibok guests. I want to tell Shekau that wherever he is, for those, I know Shekau will be watching this, so if you don't want Shekau to see your face, you can turn the other, the other side of your face. But check out wherever you are. All those people that you are keeping in bondage, remember you were born by a woman. We can never give up those people. You have to let them go. You have to set them free. All those internal displaced persons, being displaced in their own country, I dedicate this award to you. And I want to tell you, all the internal displaced persons, that very, very soon you will be reunited. Another sense, Everyone that is suffering from terminal illness, that does not have means of seeking Medicare, especially Sadi Abubakar Daba and several others, I dedicate this award to you. And the final dedication, all the warriors that are here standing with me on the podium, from the church, from the crime sector, and from the anti-corruption sector. I dedicate this award. The result of this award is more work. And I want to say that this country is worth dying for. That whatever it is, whatever it will take me, and from all the faces I'm seeing, this credible and impressive audience and gentlemen of the press, I will never let you down. Thank you very much for this award. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our own, one of our best, talents, docket in the first game. I remember during the last program we had, I called him a revolutionary comrade. So on behalf of the National Crime Watch, I want to present this award to our own DCP. Ibrahim Mau. Let him continue to act on behalf of everyone in Nigeria. In recognition of his immense contribution to the fight against financial crime in Nigeria. I want to say that it's a rare privilege. And the acting EFCC chairman has always said that the fight against corruption should not just be left for him. It's the fight of all of us. And he said it's a thankless fight. I've had the privilege of interacting with him several times. He came to our office a day after Professor Wadeshu in Kaki. And he is so passionate about Nigeria. He also feels that he has no other country except Nigeria. And that he will do all he can in ensuring that Nigeria will rid it of corruption. On behalf of everyone that seeks for truth, for justice, for equity, anyone that wants Nigeria to bleed less under the heavy weight of corruption, I present this award and it's been collected by the Prime Boss here in Lagos. We have Mr. Sami Ahmad is the one collecting it. And with the heartbeat of the anti-corruption fight, 
I'll see him on Monday, tomorrow on Monday. Our own DCP, Ibrahim Mato. Can we give him a locomotive round of applause, please? Nigeria is our home. We must all come together. We must all join this fight against corruption. It is all about us. It's not about any other person in any other country. It is all about us. The, the, the cost of corruption is a weight on a burden on every one of us. So we must all join hands and fight corruption and defeat corruption. By the grace of God, we are able to defeat corruption. Thank you and God bless you. All. God bless you. Ready? Just move this way to the dinner stand. Just move out our dish. Okay. All our dish, please. Before you take your dinner, we want you with your flag on the podium, please. All your dish. Can you please step out with your one on the podium? We want that in the next edition of the newspaper. Please, all our dish. Congratulations, congratulations. Dr. Joe Dumaki, I want to sit up with you. Congratulations, civil defense. Even safety, everything will boil down to corruption. So the strategy that we must inject in the fight of fight against corruption is for us to see it. As a collective effort, it's not only the fight of ICPC or EFCC. We should also realize that we must change our mindset. The mindset that says we must do things the other way. And I want each and everyone to realize that the fight against corruption starts with us. We have to be dedicated ourselves to this fight so that victory can be achieved. Now, on side of the law enforcement, what is your take on these people in ensuring that they decide that they are accordingly? I think first and foremost, I will plead for the welfare of all those who fight corruption so that they don't compromise. But they must know that patriotism is first. So they must prioritize anything that they do in ensuring that they fight corruption because if they do not fight corruption, any, anyone can be engulfed, including their father, mother, and spouse. We should also know that anyone that is should not be spared, should be made as an example. And in making such an example, we should serve as deterrent. Those who fight corruption should see it as a lifeline. And I also want to say that the state of emergency should be declared in the fight against corruption so that we see, there should be red alerts and we have also issued red card to corruption and all of us we are more determined than ever that Nigeria will overcome in the fight against corruption. We need to guide generously so the things that we do that we do. You know this of doing is there. You can always, always tell us that what I'm going to do. And I can always do the right thing. So that others will always see me doing the right thing. Thank you very much, Mr. Tony. Thank you very much, Mr. Tony. Well, my, my name is Tony Okwe. I am the editor, I'm the publisher editor in chief CEO of National Crime Watch Magazine. We are here today to celebrate exemplary leaders at the Shanti Hotel in town. And for me, celebrating people who have done exceedingly well and exceptionally well in the crime and security industry shows that this country has hope for a better Nigeria. And the truth is, for me, I think today's award is a, is a huge success. Because I have had, I got sponsors, I got individuals who gave both financially and morally to make sure that this event came to pass. And I'm highly, 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 highly grateful that I'm also part of history and that I'm the host of this epic event and I believe that next day event will make a great difference and you are definitely going to witness huge difference and huge improvement and I thank 
all the media, I thank all the recipients, I thank all the law, law enforcement officers who took out of their busy schedule to be here to receive their awards and also for all of us to celebrate, celebrate ourselves and also assess where we are coming from and where we are going. We believe that the next year award will be a unique one and it will be different. It will be, it will be, it will be, it will be, it will be a, a reference point to other awards in the nation. Thank you and God bless you.